What's going on guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today we're going to be talking about all the different types of costs that I incurred whilst launching a brand new product with Amazon FBA. So I'm going to be going through each and every cost that I made uh, on a line by line basis. And in addition to that, I'm also going to be talking about what costs I actually thought weren't that essential to somebody that's looking to save a bit of money and launch with Amazon for the first time. As always, if you enjoy the content of the video, please, please do subscribe. And if you've got any questions at all, you can post them in the comments section below or on the brand new Amazon FBA Smashers group, which you can find on Facebook. See you in a minute. Okay then, so I thought it'd be really interesting to explain to you guys kind of all the different types of costs that I've incurred um, in the lead up to launching a product that's actually just generated £10,000 in revenue. And I thought it'd be really encouraging for you guys to, to kind of realise that it doesn't actually take that much money up front to, to be able to start off a business with Amazon. Uh, I mean, I've done it probably in a more expensive way that you'd have to, but I'm hoping with this video, when I kind of go through what costs I think are essential and you actually see just how small the amount needs to be, um, that it would really give you the encouragement to be able to start your venture with Amazon properly. So without further ado. So the first cost that I incurred was uh, quite a big one. It was £495 and that was for Johnny Bradley's course. Now, for me, this was something that I did really require because I was in a full-time job and didn't really have the time uh, to be coming home in the evenings and to be researching how to do Amazon FBA. But having taken the course, and it is something that I do really recommend if you haven't got the time available to be able to research it yourself, is that it is definitely possible to be able to learn how to do Amazon without paying anything. So that's why I've marked it down as unessential. So the next cost, which I definitely think is essential, is the Jungle Scout Chrome extension. Now, not the web app, which in a previous video you'll see that I said I, I just didn't think there was much point to buying it nowadays. It's too competitive. There's too many people using it. But the Chrome extension itself, definitely essential. You need that there to give you a, a rough idea as to how many sales a potential product that you're looking to get into is making. So definitely required. The next one is company registration. Now it's something that I did and a lot of the um, Amazon gurus recommend it. It's pretty cheap to do, it's only £12 and it kind of makes the whole process a bit more official. Um, I think for me as well it kind of kick-started me a bit more into actually wanting to do Amazon. I thought, you know, I've gone through the process of setting uh, a company up, I've taken action, so I should definitely continue uh, with my Amazon journey. Now again, setting up a company can also benefit you in terms of how much tax you pay, uh, but again, it's not an essential cost, you can do it. Uh, just as an individual or sole trader. So I've marked it down here as unessential. So the next cost came after I discovered what product that I wanted to do. So I'd done the Jungle Scout research, I'd looked on Amazon, saw that the sales were there and saw that the competition wasn't too high. And, that, and then I went on to Alibaba on source suppliers. Now, what I did here was I actually spoke to quite a large amount of suppliers just to kind of get an idea of the different prices and the different types of quality available. And I decided to choose three suppliers to get samples from. Now again, this isn't really the done thing. I just wanted to be extra sure. And my product kind of came in different variations. Every supplier wasn't selling an absolutely identical product. They were all very slightly different in terms of design. So I ordered three different samples just to make sure that I was happy with the quality level in order to make my mind up in terms of what variation I wanted. Now, this isn't very common. I'd say that it's definitely possible to you know, find that product and find the right supplier with just one or two samples. So in the calculation that's coming up further down the line, I've just used two samples, uh, the cost of two samples. The next cost, which is really, really important in terms of establishing your brand and giving the customer confidence is logo design. Now, having a logo design can cost from as little as five pounds and as much as probably to thousands of pounds. Uh, now what I did was I actually got mine made on Fiverr. Now I know people have had mixed experiences with Fiverr, the quality can vary, but the benefit is that it's cheap. You can find people that will design you a logo from between five and 20 pounds. Now my tip for you would be in order to ensure that the quality is there is kind of look for examples yourself of kind of what you want the logo to look like. So for example, if your product had, if your brand name had the initials, I don't know, DD or something like that, just go on Google and type in 
DD logo and look at images and you'll see lots and lots of different types of logos with the initials DD. That will be that will help you to really generate different ideas for the logo designer to kind of help them. I always find that when you're trying to be creative or when you're trying to help somebody to design something, it's best to kind of give them an idea of the sorts of things that you're looking for instead of just saying, here's a blank sheet of paper, go away and design me something. In my experience and from talking to friends and other people that are doing Amazon, it's those types of um, kind of, it's those types of experience or not giving any guidance to the logo designer that results in the worst uh, designs possible. So logo design definitely needed and it can be done cheaply provided that you help the designer out. So the next cost is essential if you want to list something on Amazon. As soon as you create a listing, it'll ask you for the EAN barcode number. Now I actually bought two because my product came in two different variations. Um, but if you're only buying one product, you only need one. So the cost here is really five pounds instead of 10. Okay, so box art design. Now this is something that I highly, highly recommend. I definitely encourage you to do it. The reason being, it just makes your product look that much more professional. When I was speaking to a number of different suppliers in Alibaba, a lot of them said that they could offer my product just in a clear plastic bag. Now this is something that I didn't want to do for a number of reasons. Now the first reason that I didn't want to do it is I just thought not having a box would look completely unprofessional. If a customer were to order something off Amazon and it came in a clear plastic bag, they might think that the product was fake or something like that, which is definitely what I didn't want them to think. And um, secondly, you just lose the impact of your brand. So if you've had a logo made or something like that and you want to really enforce the brand on your customer, a clear plastic bag isn't gonna do that. And thirdly, I thought that my product was something that could probably be gifted to somebody at Christmas, for example. Now sending somebody something in a clear plastic bag makes gifting a product really, really hard and it'll probably put them off. So those are the three reasons why I think having box art made and your product properly packaged is essential because it reinforces the brand, it gives the customer confidence that you're a proper company and it makes your product something that can be gifted for birthdays or Christmas, for example. Now the next item, which I don't actually think is essential, uh, but I had made was to have instructions put together. So I paid for somebody to design the instructions and to write the manual uh, and to also kind of have an introductory page explaining who the company was and to also ask for a product review. Now, unless your product is actually really complex to use and the user is gonna be actually quite confused as to how to use it without instructions, I'd probably say that having a full set of instructions isn't that essential. You could probably get your box art designer to just write a couple of sentences on the back of the box in terms of how to use it, uh, in addition to asking for a review. You don't actually need a separate manual within the box itself, so not essential. Now the next cost is something that I thought was definitely essential given that I was paying for box art to be made and designed and the customer wouldn't even see it until it arrived at their door. So what I decided to do was to pay somebody to essentially make a 3D render of the box and what it would look like so that I could use the box art on my main product photo. Now what I thought with having the box art rendered was that when the customer came onto the listing, if they saw the main product photo and they really liked the look of it, that the, uh, the picture of the actual box art itself would also help with the conversion because they might think, oh, that looks quite professional or, oh, that looks like something that I could gift somebody given that it comes in a box. So again, I, I just thought, given that I've paid for nice packaging to be made, I want the customer to know that. So that's why I paid the 10 pounds here to have my box art turned into a 3D render. So the next cost, which is entirely down to me and it will differ based on what product you're going with, uh, was the actual stock costs. Now, now for my product, the supplier actually said, if I wanted to have my own box art and to have my own branding put onto the actual product, I'd need to have a min minimum order quantity of a thousand units. Now, don't worry guys, this is not typical at all. My experience with other products and with other people I've spoken to about Amazon is it's typically a lot lower, usually around 200. But no matter how hard I tried with my supplier, they just would not budge at all on the minimum order quantity. Uh, and I thought, you know, I wanted that custom packaging, I wanted the, the branding, and I wanted that supplier because they were such high quality. So I just had to make the decision to order a thousand units, which I was actually really glad I did, given that I sold out of one of the variations within two weeks. And also I decided to have all of my units shipped by air. Now you could take the decision to ship half by air, half by sea. My advice, if you are gonna be doing more than 500 units, is to split them. So do 250 by air, 
and then the remainder by shipping. Now with my product, because it was so small and light, the, uh, the air shipping wasn't actually a great amount. It came to about 60p a unit, including all duties and everything. So I was quite lucky there. But if your product is quite heavy or it's a, you know, it's a bit bulky or a bit bigger, definitely would advise splitting your shipment half and half, doing say 300 units air, so you've got them in the Amazon warehouse quickly as soon as you launch, and then doing the remainder by sea shipping. So that'll probably take three to four weeks to arrive. The next cost, again, I don't think it's that essential, but it was all about establishing my brand and making me look a bit more like a professional company, was basically buying a web domain and setting an email address up. So when I email a customer, they'll see that it's from support at mybrandname.com, and it'll give them that bit more confidence that I'm a proper company, um, as opposed to having something like Janssen at gmail.com. So although I'd say it's not essential, it's not a big cost, and I'd say, you know, if you have got the money, definitely uh, look into getting your own domain and email address. So for those of you that have seen my launch strategy video, this is a cost that I'd say is definitely essential. It's getting, you know, five or six friends to, to buy your product and to leave you a review uh, whilst you're launching all about social proofing and giving confidence to uh, people that are looking at your listing. So unfortunately, I do think this is a cost of having a successful launch, but the benefit of course is that if your friends don't want the product, uh, you can give them the money and then they can just post it back to you and then you can sell it on eBay or something like that. Now the next cost, keyword research, is definitely essential. It's all about optimizing your listing. It's so, so important that when a customer is searching for um, your product that they're able to find it and they're able to find you so you definitely don't want to scrimp on this one guys this is you know it's 40 pounds it's not a great deal but it will definitely save you in the long run now the next cost that I incurred was Amazon's FBA monthly fee of 30 pounds now I had to incur this in order to be able to set my listing up and to create my shipment plan um, I've put it's not essential here because you're actually able to get it refunded provided that you've not sold anything so what I'd advise is Create your Seller Central account and get everything set up and prepared. And then whilst you're waiting for your inventory to arrive, just message the, um, the Seller Central help team and say, uh, I'm not expecting stock to arrive for another couple of weeks, but I've been charged £30. Please could I have a, a, a refund as a goodwill gesture, given that I've not sold anything at all, and I'll happily refund it. So that's not an essential, that's not a true essential cost. Now the next item is important if you've had branding put onto your own product. If you aren't having branding put on your products, then you can skip this one because you'll be able to take photos of the samples that you received. But for me, my product was having my brand name put on it and I was having box art made. So I had to pay £25 to have the unit shipped from China directly to me so that I could arrange photography. Now the next cost of Instagram marketing isn't essential at all. I just wanted to build up a bit of a following on social media so that when I started doing adverts and things like that, uh, people that clicked on my brand name would see that I already had a following, but it's definitely not essential and I've not actually started advertising on Instagram at all yet, so I don't even know uh, if it will work, so that's why I'm saying this cost for when you're launching isn't essential. Now 3D rendering isn't actually something that I considered at all when I was thinking about what product photos I wanted to have. But honestly, it's something that can really save you so much money. So I paid for somebody, I think on Fiverr again, to make me a 3D render of my product. Uh, basically sent them about 60 different photos of my product from every single different angle that you could imagine. And they sent me what looks like a real life photograph of my product. And it only cost me 50 pounds. Now, of course, you can hire a photographer or you can have a go yourself. Hiring a photographer can cost quite a bit. When I was doing my research, I think the quotes were starting from 70 pounds. One guy even quoted me 300 pounds uh, if I wanted to have lifestyle photos made. Um, and of course you can take photos yourself. So what I did was combine them. I had uh, a 3D render made for my main product photo. And then for the lifestyle photos, I just took them myself. I used an iPhone and I've got a DSLR camera, managed to get some really professional photos. Uh, and in the end only spent 50 pounds in total. So I'd say, you know, if your product is something that you think you can have a 3D render made of it, uh, definitely look into it. Definitely contact a couple of people on Fiverr uh, or any of the websites that offer rendering services and see what they think, see if it's possible because it can really save you a lot of money. The next cost was Feedback Wiz, which is basically an auto emailer. Now, it's very cheap, it's only £10 a month. I'd say it's actually not essential though, especially when you're first launching because you can just do the emailing yourself. What I did in the first couple of days of business was wrote out my own template and then manually emailed every customer that purchased from me. 
um, asking about their thoughts and whether they'd like to leave a review. So not essential. Now the final cost, the trademark fee, is something that's definitely not essential, but it's something that I decided to do so that I could firstly protect myself. A lot of my competitors uh, are Chinese and I didn't want to run the risk that they'd try and steal my brand or my pictures or anything. Uh, and the second reason is so that I could get on Amazon's brand registry program, which basically allows you to upload more photos and write a bit more about your product so that you can increase that conversion rate. So it's quite pricey at £170 and it's definitely not essential, so I've marked it as a cross here. Okay, so in total, all these costs added up together comes to £5,062, so that's everything that I spent, so from stock to all the plugins to Johnny's course, the trademarking fee, everything that I've just run through there, okay? Not including stock, so to make it a bit more relatable to you, was £1,162, so still quite a lot, but don't forget that I've got a lot of costs in there that I don't think are actually essential. I just wanted to make sure that I was confident with what I was doing with Amazon and that my product was the highest quality possible. So that's why I decided to spend a bit more money on things that I don't actually deem as essential. Okay, so the total amount of non-essential costs, so how much I think it would really cost you if you were to only incur costs that were absolutely essential to get your product and to launch successfully on Amazon is £2,300. So that compares to my £5,000 figure and not including stock, look at that guys, £350. So you can see that it really doesn't cost that much to be able to launch a successful product on Amazon provided that you only incur the essential costs that I've detailed in this video. So £350 not including stock, so I'd say including your product and shipping costs and any other minor costs here and there, you can definitely launch a product on £1,000 or less and turn that investment into so much more. With my amount, although I did spend a bit more, I've already generated £10,000 in my first month. I've just done another stock order. I'm hoping for it to arrive in the next few weeks, and I'm hoping by Christmas that will have generated an additional £30,000. So you can really see here, guys, the power of Amazon and just how little money can turn into a huge amount if you get it right. So that's it guys, I hope that it's encouraged you and given you a bit more motivation to continue your search on Amazon. If you've got any questions, please do post them below or on the Amazon FBA Smashers group, a link of which is in the description below as well. And if you enjoyed this video, please remember to subscribe. I've got loads more ideas in the pipeline and you really don't want to miss out. See you next time.